Hello and welcome back to another great show, Petroglyphs in the Sky, Ultimate UFO Show. The only place where we get to the bottom of what really happened. March 13, 1997. The only place where you're going to find out the true facts of the Phoenix Lights, what the Phoenix Lights is, with hardcore facts without hearsay. How is everybody doing today? Glad that you could make it on this wonderful, hot, hot summer day. Oh, my God. Coming out of the desert, man. I tell you what, it's got to be like 150 degrees out there. <laughs> well, it feels like it. Welcome to summer, right? We've got a great show for you guys tonight. We're going to talk about a little bit about the petroglyphs on South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona, on how they are connected with these UFOs that we see in the skies, not only in Phoenix, but in your neck of the woods also. Glad you guys are here. We're going to talk about the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona. That has, hasn't been talked about in 80 years. Glad you guys can make it. I'm Jeff Woolwine. I'm a born and raised native in Phoenix, Arizona. Been seeing these UFOs ever since I was a kid. Was brought up with these lights, brought up with these orbs. Been seeing these orbs in the sky ever since I was a lad. A lad. <laughs> Playing catch football with my dad outside out in the front yard. There's an orb in the sky. Oh my God, what the fuck? What the hell is that orb in the sky? Right? See the lights in the sky. You go to school. You're, you're in fifth grade. You're talking to a little one of your best friends, a little Native American boy, and you're like, dude, did you see that light last night? And what does he do? He says, oh, yeah, my grandfather, right, says those lights live in the mountains over there. And he points to the west side of Phoenix, Arizona, to the mountains called the White Tank Mountains, right? It's like when I'm in the fifth grade, man. And, <laughs> and who is it? It's a Native American boy telling me his grandfather's, you know, telling me that the lights, these UFOs, these orbs, they live in the mountains. Oh, my God, right? Growing up, seeing these things all over the skies, everywhere I went, there's one. There goes one. There goes another one. These things are here. So I went on a hunt, on a quest, on a journey to find out exactly what the hell's going on in our sky. Started doing research. I love archaeology. Been studying archaeology for many, many years. I'm an amateur archaeologist. I can spot something out of place a mile away. I'm very good at what I do. This is how I was able to discover the tombs out there on South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. Also the altars and a lot of other stuff that the archaeologists in Phoenix does not talk about but i bring the evidence down from the mountain i bring the evidence to you on my discoveries out there on the mountains and it's just not my word i mean doing this investigation for the past 20 years or so i called out a native american shaman to go up there and teach me about the petroglyphs on South Mountain. I started watching South Mountain. I, I was seeing the lights. I was seeing the things on the sky. They were pointing me to the mountain in Phoenix, South Mountain. I followed, I followed the Phoenix lights to the mountain. The mountain, I was living in Mesa on the east side of Phoenix. These orbs appeared in the sky in 2004 going west towards South Mountain. I followed them. 2005, I started watching these things in the daytime. I moved specifically to that mountain to get a better look on what the hell was going on. I lived by that mountain for about three years. And I saw some amazing things. And I soon realized, I soon realized that these things were not crafts because that's what everybody was telling me and that's what everybody is thinking that these things are extraterrestrial spaceships crafts technology nuts and bolts stuff like that right 
but I'm seeing different stuff, man. I'm witnessing something completely different other than spaceships, little green guys, people telling me they got aliens in their closets. I'm like, dude, I've been watching these things for many years. I, I was researching them, you know, right? I was watching them on a day, daily basis because once I moved to the mountain, they knew. They knew I was there. They knew what, what I was up to. They knew I was out hunting them. And I was. I was hunting the Phoenix Lights. I was hunting these creatures, these UFOs. It wasn't just going off hearsay, man. I'm doing my own investigations. Not just reading a book about something that can't be proven. But I'm out there proving what is here. They saw me out there. I'm watching the lights. I'm watching these things come and go from the south, some from South Mountain out there. And I soon realized, I soon realized that, you know, we're not dealing with technology here at all. You know, there's no, for one, there's no evidence of a spaceship going over F the city of Phoenix, March 13th, 1997. I mean, as far as that that is concerned, that's you know, that's just hearsay. We don't have any evidence of that. I am someone that goes by proof on what we can prove and what the evidence suggests. The evidence suggests that there wasn't anything that flew over the valley that night because we had sky watchers out there, right? The reason why we have some of these videos of March 13, 1997 is because we have sky watchers out there waiting for something to happen because they were watching they were seeing lights days and weeks prior prior to march 13th 1997 they were ready for it so if anything was going to fly over the valley of the sun surely they would have got it on tape we would have photographs film it went from like a thousand people witnessing to a hundred thousand to the whole damn city Seeing a mile wide crab going eight miles an hour over the city of Phoenix, and not one person can take a photograph. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I mean, we have to lie on what the evidence points us to. And what does the evidence show us? The evidence show us four people filming a string of lights on the west side of South Mountain. Are they moving across the sky? No. They're on the west side of, 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 of uh, South Mountain, far west of the valley, mind you. I mean, these things were really over there. I was out there that night. Like I said, I was born here. I was out there that night, and, and I was in the reported flight path. And I didn't see nothing go over Phoenix. And the reason why I didn't see anything over Phoenix is because nothing happened, man. It was over there on the west side. Ugh, we have to examine the facts. We have to examine prove on what we can prove. Do spaceships and little guys exist? I'm open, man. I'm, well, I'm, I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see the evidence. I'm ready to see the proof. You know, I, I have seen some things in the sky. Now, don't get me wrong. I have seen some things in the sky that could resemble a craft. All right? Now, I've seen a black triangle before, and I've seen these jacks in the sky going counterclockwise during the no-fly zone up there in upstate New York during 9-11. I have seen these things that would could resemble a spaceship. Now, is it a spaceship? We just don't know yet. We act. We don't have the facts. We have a lot of hearsay. We have a lot of people writing books on hearsay or write or writing books just to make a name for themselves. You know, just to get on that soapbox, right? Just to make money off people's ignorance. But we we really need to look at the examine the facts and the evidence. And that's what I'm all about. Because I went out there and I, I hiked the mountain for many years. I explored the mountain. I discovered all kinds of stuff. I did field work for 17 years out there in Phoenix, hunting these lights down. I mean, I don't think anybody has more credibility than myself. No one has ever done what I was doing out there. I was doing this stuff before Ancient Aliens uh, TV show aired and the UFO, Hi UFO Hunter show aired. Matter of fact, I did the pilot for the UFO Hunter show and the Ancient Aliens TV series. They called me to do the pilot. Then later on, in 2000, that was in 2005. Then later on in 2007, I did the History Channel. I did the UFO Hunter show. And I'm showing these people, look, dude, 
the petroglyphs around the mountains of the Valley of the Sun are prehistoric, prehistoric UFO photograph sightings. I even found the, the spread of the of the uh, of the 1997 event carved in stone over a thousand years ago. So this isn't anything new. A lot of people think these UFOs are new. No, man, this is part of Arizona's history. This is part of Arizona Arizona's history, and it always has been. It's just been covered up. I hiked the mountains. I studied the mountains. I studied the rock art. I, I watched with my own eyes what was going on out there. I called out a Native American shaman to teach me about the petroglyphs, teach me about the, the history of, of, the, of the Native Americans, things like this. And then I took it a step further, and I went to the public library in downtown Phoenix, and I discovered a folder that has been tucked away for 80 years that talks about the tombs, that talks about the spirits of the earth and sky. Say anything about spaceships? No. Talks about the whole Indians, the first people who got here, along with the Mayans. You won't hear any of this from anybody else, but the evidence is there. I'm telling you, I'm bringing this evidence to you. This is my discovery. I've, I discovered all this stuff. And the first park ranger in the 1930s who knew about the, the, knew about the gold tombs up there on South Mountain, knew about the altars, understands what happened to the Ho'okam Indians because the Ho'okam is a Pima name, because the Pimas and the Tohoda Odom tribe considered themselves ancestors to the Ho'okam, and Ho'okam is a name that means the people who are gone, the people who are missing, because we don't know what happened to these people. They were here for a thousand years, they ruled this valley for a thousand years, and then all of a sudden they up and vanished. Archaeologists wants us to say, well, they simply migrated somewhere else. But the evidence does not show this. The evidence shows that these people were here one day and gone the next with no trace of where they went now it wasn't just these tribes here in phoenix arizona it was this, it was tribes all around the world at the same time that ruled their land for a thousand years and then all of a sudden came up missing what happened to them archaeologists wants to blow smoke up our ass but the evidence the evidence suggests something completely different we have the oral tradition on what the Native Americans say. And I've been talking to a lot of Native Americans here in Phoenix. I talked to a lot of Native American shamans and medicine men. And I've, I've, I've done my homework. And they all say, the ones that want to talk to me about this anyway, because this is kind of taboo stuff. I mean, according to them, we're not supposed to know about these sky beings. This is... This is for this is forbidden knowledge, if you want, if you will, forbidden fruit. We are not supposed to know about these creatures, but they're here. We see them, and more and more is coming. And we'll probably get into that later on the show on the reason why. And what do they say about it? The oral tradition, through generations upon generations of their ancestors telling them the story, is that these people were taken away. By the Phoenix Lights, by these things we see in the skies today. This is why there will probably never, ever be disclosure. The government's going to come out and say, oh, yeah, we're going to uh, do some disclosure, blah, blah. No, man, they're not going to say anything. They're going to admit, they're finally admitting that, yeah, there's something here because, you know, there's, there's just no denying, of, denying this. Everyone's starting to see them now because more and more is coming, and we'll get into the reasons why later on in the show. So they can't be denying this. Oh, it's flares. Oh, it's balloons. Oh, it's trash. This and that, you know. I think my last show I talked about the, that little uh, unclassified report on the UAVs or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. <laughs> Whatever happened to UFOs, I don't know. <laughs> but that's what they call them now, UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Phenomenon, beep, 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 phenomenon, beep, 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 phenomenon, beep, beep, okay, <laughs> had to get that out of my so out of my system. Yeah, man. So they they say the oral tradition say that these things were taken away. Some say by the devils, as that the devil came from the east and took these people away. 
And then, you know, the archaeologists, oh, they migrated. Well, where they where did they go, right? We, we would have evidence on where they went. I mean, when you and I moved, we take our belongings with us. The whole comes in. They left everything behind and simply disappeared. Oral tradition says they were taken away. The rock art, the prehistoric photographs, and that's what this is. That's what these that's what these petroglyphs are, is around the mountains of Phoenix, Arizona, are sacred scrolls of history of Phoenix, Arizona. Is the real history? Is the cover up history? They say that Phoenix is a fiery bird that rose up from the ashes of the formal civilization, but they don't tell you about this formal civilization. But the prehistoric photographs carved on the mountains around this valley does. And it tells you a scary story. Yes, it does. Are they talking about spaceships, flying saucers, little green men from Mars? No, man. No, they're talking about spirits, man. They're talking about creatures. They're talking about shape-shifting entities, living beings, right? Who have the capability of flying, can go through these doorways, not only in the sky, but also in into the earth the native americans say that they're going down into the underworld that's what these spirals represent these spirals carved out there on the mountains are symbols of doorways doorways where these creatures come and go from they say that they go down into the underworld but on a scientific understanding they're going down into that energy because, you know, South Mountain and the rest of the mountains around Phoenix were made by fault lines, were made by volcanoes. And all the Indians from all the nations, all these tribes of, of Indians used to gather here in the Valley of the Sun to watch these lights in the sky over this mountain, over this sacred mountain, formerly known as Mount Sapoa, Mountain of Mercy. Now it's called South Mountain. It's still a sacred mountain today because why? These things continue, continue to visit this mountain. Not just every once in a while, but on a regular basis. It's a pattern. It's a pattern on when, they, when you can see them and when you can't. That first year I was out there watching these sky beams, I noticed they came this year or this month, this month, and this day and that month and this time and... And then they were gone this month and this month and then they came back this month and this month and I'm out there hiking the mountains and I'm watching the equinox and the solstice. I'm watching the, the petroglyphs and, and these boulders that were picked up and placed oriented towards the east for the morning sunrise because that's where the Native Americans say they, they, are, they, they came from the east. They emerged out of the east. Now some of the Hopis say that they actually emerged out of the Grand Canyon. And there's a cave there in the Grand Canyon um, that is totally roped off now. You can't go into that anymore because the Hopis say that it's sacred and that's where um, the emergence point of where they, they came out of into this world. There are some archaeologists that, that claim that they have found giant bones inside some of these caves in the Grand Canyon. Now, that's very significant, too, because the petroglyphs out here on South Mountain talk about giants. And there's evidence. These boulders, these huge boulders weigh, you know, a couple tons, have been picked up, placed, to orient or to oriented uh, towards the summer solstice and the equinox and stuff like that. Archaeologist wants to say, well, it's time to plant corn. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with plant corn. It has everything to do with when these sky creatures, these sky beings will be here. And when they are going to leave, they, they come before the equinox or there before that equinox. They leave during that, e during that equinox time. Then they come back during the solstice, things like this. So it's a pattern. It's a, it's a pattern that's been going on probably ever since the beginning of the time. Everything, ever since these things came down. A lot of people think that, you know, they're from another planet. But it's not more, it's not outer space, but more inner space. These creatures are part of... Our world, these things have always been here with us. That's what the Native Americans say when they go up on the mountains and they talk about, you know, they're going to talk to their spirits. Man, they're talking about these sky creatures, man. 
And so it was a pattern. I, I that first year I learned when they were going to be here, when they weren't. Then the second year it repeated itself, and the third year it repeated itself. Oh my God, dude, that's it. It's a pattern here. It's a pattern. And once you understand that pattern, then you can predict, you know, when these things will be here and when they won't. Because when the sun moves across the sky during these changing of the seasons, they align with, with these natural energy, energy sources around the globe, such as fault lines and volcanoes and things like that. And when it aligns, especially here in Phoenix, Arizona, that's why they're, that's why they're attractive so much to this mountain. That's why the, the equinox and the solstice markers are scattered all over South Mountain. When the sun aligns with these fault lines, it opens up this doorway. That's what these spirals represent out there are, is a doorway, a passageway to the underworld, to the fault lines, to the energy. So when that sun is in the right position, it attracts these beings to that energy source. When the sun moves different positions during the changing of the seasons, it goes somewhere else. They might go to Florida. That's where the energy source is now. Or it might go to, you know, Jerusalem or, or you know, Paris or Mexico. They're following the energy. They're following the sun's pattern. They're following the equinox and the solstice. That's why, so, that's why this, this, this tracking of the sun is so important from all these Native American tribes, from, from all these tribes around the globe. We always see prehistoric rocks that are oriented towards the equinox and the solstice and the sunrise and the sunset and stuff like that. All these, all these tribes, all these prehistoric tribes, why? Do they want to know when it's time to plant corn? Oh, no. It has everything to do when their sky gods will be back or when they're going to leave. Stonehenge. Come on. All these markers that are tracking the sun. It's not a it's it's not like a a calendar to, you know, plant corn and plant seeds and but it's a calendar for these sky creatures in the sky. So I soon realized that, you know, we're not dealing with technology. We'll deal we're dealing with, you know, something completely different and and, uh, you know, these things are alive. They started flying right by my window. I've got some great shots of these things. And, you know, this video that I'm going to show you today, I'm not sure exactly where it was filmed at, but it's great footage of this creature. And you can totally tell that it's not a spaceship, that, that we're, we're not dealing with, with crafts here. You know, I, I see a lot of CGI stuff and a lot of CGI triangles and, th and things like that. But I think what we really need to pay attention is is these orbs and these lights and and these weird looking creatures and you know for instance like Quetzalcoatl the flying serpent you know I, I've seen him so many times in Phoenix and and I filmed him so many times these sky worms and that's what the the petroglyphs talk about that's what the history talks about here in Phoenix that these these uh, sky creatures these sky entities entities of the earth and the sky have always been here and is part of Arizona's past, Arizona's history, especially Phoenix. I believe you know one of the reasons why the Native Americans settled here is because they followed the lights. They followed their, their sky beings. They followed their sky gods to these mountains right here in the valley. They lived here for a thousand years. They performed sacrifice onto these beings for these beings, for the tracking of the sun and things like this and they poured blood down the this holy mountains rocks until one day the story says one day they stopped the sacrifice and it wasn't always a, a dry desert it was like a tropical like landscape here and there's so much evidence to suggest this you know and, and it's just it just boggles the mind on, on how this damn archaeologist in the city of phoenix you know is not talking about this stuff you know, it's just overlooking this stuff and it wants us to believe something completely different when the evidence is there. The evidence of altars is there. The old, the evidence of, of, of gold tombs is there. The evidence of the Mayans were here in Phoenix. I mean, come on. Arizona was part of Mexico back in the day. So, of course, the Mayans were here. Archaeologists doesn't want to admit this.
Archaeologist says he doesn't even want to admit that the, the Spanish conquistadors came to this valley looking for some looking for one of the seven lost cities of gold. The city of Cibola. And you know, according to Charles Holberg, the first park ranger in the 1930s, he uh, in his writings, the stuff that I discovered on him, I mean, it from the way he writes and stuff and the way he talks about stuff, I, I think he was probably convinced that this was Phoenix, Arizona was one of these cities of gold. You can find this information on my website down below. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky. Now, all my videos have links to my website. And there you can see the, the writings of Charles Holbrook, the first park ranger of South Mountain in the 30s. You can see on how he talks about how these uh, spirits of the earth and sky were here uh, and how there's, there's gold buried in, in the mountains of Phoenix, Arizona. Talks about the Mayans, talking about the sacrifice. And so when the sacrificing stopped, that's when it kind of dried up here in Phoenix. That's one of the reasons why, and according to the myths here and the legends, that's the reason why it's a desert now. Because it wasn't a desert in the beginning. It was like it was like a tropical-like landscape. There's waterfalls down the sides of the mountains. We can see the evidence of the waterfalls. We can see the evidence that there was rivers and all kinds. There was lots of water here. And actually, the water was re re was really high altitude in some places because of the great flood. We can see evidence of weathering high up on these mountains. I know I was there. <laughs> I climbed it. You know, so yeah, there's evidence of weathering on these high mountains uh, in Phoenix. So that's telling me that, you know, there was this Phoenix, Arizona was under lots of amounts of water. But but back then, you know, when the Hohokams were here, it was it was tropical. You know, it, it was it was green. It was full of life and 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 water just flourished everywhere. And and so it wasn't dried up like this until until the legends say that the sacrificing on the mountain stopped. And then we still haven't figured out the reasons why yet. I don't know if it was a religious purpose or they just thought that it wasn't um, right to sacrifice children and and their enemies to these lights anymore. I don't know, but for some reason they stopped the sacrifice. And when that did, it upset the spirits. It upset it upset these sky beings. It upset these Phoenix lights, these creatures, the Quetzalcoatl, the flying diamonds, the flying orbs. The flying worms and zigzag patterns and stuff like that. And that's when the place started to dry up. And when the, and when the Native Americans, when the tribe started to understand this, they were yelling at their leaders, why did you stop the sacrifice? You have upset the gods. Look what's going on in our, in our land. It's starting to die. The water, there is no water. There is no green grass anymore. Why did you stop the sacrifice? And then from out of the blue, Charles Holbrook, the first park ranger, writes, and where did he get this information from? From the Native Americans who was told what happened to their ancestors. He writes that the devil came from the east and took these people away. These sky beings, these creatures of the earth and sky the phoenix lights came down and took these people away now there were survivors to this and they hid in caves charles holbrook the first park ranger goes on to write why would a chart why would a park ranger write all this you know i mean why would he do all this and 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 and, and protect the gold tombs that were out there Why did you stop the sacrifice? They're all yelling at the leaders. They got taken away. They're, and then the people, they hid in the caves. And they saw what was going on. And what it was all over with, they were afraid. And they knew that if they, if they were going to continue to live in this valley of the sun, Phoenix, now known as Phoenix, Arizona, then eventually they would have to go back to war with these spirits of the earth and sky. So they packed up all their gold and they buried them in tombs. 
Charles Holbrook writes this because he learned this from the Native Americans. They say that, they, that the gold that's buried on South Mountain is as high as the tallest cactus saguaro and as round as the sun. And they buried all this gold and all, and all these uh, gold idols and stuff like that in these tombs. And they vowed never to come back here. Because they knew if they were going to continue to live here, they'd have to go back to war with these sky creatures. Have to go back to war with these lights in the sky. They cursed this land. And they went back to their homeland. Mexico was their home. That's the story here in Phoenix. That's a story that's been covered up for 80 years. I have proof. It's, it's not just, I'm not just making this up. <laughs> The first park ranger, he, he, he knew about this. He learned it from the Indians. He wrote this down in his journals. And then when he passed away, his son wrote a book, right? He wrote a book about how his dad was keeping people away from these gold tombs. All of this is, is fact. This is not hearsay. This is not just my opinion. I'm bringing this information back to you because it's there. This is the truth. It's not hearsay. This is stuff we can verify. It's all on my website. It's all in my all in my investigations. Search my name on on the internet, Jeff Woolwine. You can find out I've been doing this for a very long time. And if it was something else, I would tell you it's something else. If I discovered something else, then I would tell you. You know, I I don't have nothing to hide here. I'm not making any money. I don't make any money from this. I don't make any money when I do TV shows. I don't make any money when I do radio shows. I certainly hell don't make any money off my book. I told the publishers to give that money to the foster kids in Phoenix. So I'm not out for the money. I'm out to get this information out to you. And let's stop listening to hearsay. Let's look at proven facts. Don't believe just someone saying nonsense, dude, with no... I've seen, I've seen so many books, right, about UFOs, and it's all words. There's no photographs. But, yeah, in my book, okay, <laughs> I show you big colors, man. Big colors of photographs, okay? And it's... it's <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is 15 years of research on South Mountain, And I'm showing you the proof. If you can't get to South Mountain on your own, then I bring the mountain to you. I brought these sacred scrolls down from the mountain, and I'm bringing it to you for you to examine, to look at the truth here, to look about what has been hidden away from you for 80 years on what the Phoenix Lights really is and also what the history of Phoenix, Arizona is. The archaeologist isn't going to tell you anything. Of course not. He knows. I mean, his team only spent five years up there. I spent 15 years up there, okay? There's a big difference, man, and there's a lot of evidence that I discovered on South Mountain in Phoenix. And I have the proof to back me up. Okay, let's get on with the announcements so we can get on to this show. What do we have here? Vulture City Paracon Part 2. I was out there in Part 1. Wickenburg, Arizona. Come on out and join us October 8th, 9th, and 10th of this year. Some great speakers going to be out there, including yours truly. Make sure you bring your books. I'll, I'll be doing some autographs out there. And also, first time ever sky watching. We're, we're going to be doing, not only going to be doing a, a ghost hunt out there, but we're also going to be doing a UFO sky watch out there. First time ever. Uh, Jane Marie Yates, contact them for your tickets. And I believe, I think all the VIT, uh, VIP tickets are sold out now. So the, the tickets are selling quick. So make sure you get a hold of Jane Marie Yates. Uh, out there, uh, not only on Facebook, but you can find them probably on the internet and uh, uh, find them on uh, Vulture City Mines in, in uh, Wickenburg, Arizona. Contact them, get your tickets fast, and come on out. Let's do a ghost hunt together. Let's talk about UFOs. Let's do a meet and greet. I'll be lecturing out there about the Phoenix Lights and about the petroglyphs and the lost history of Phoenix. And uh, yeah, you know, let's. 
let's make a day out of it. Let's make a night out of it. You know, it's going to be a great, great event. And, and it's really cool that most of it has been sold out already. So make sure that you get your tickets fast. Lots of great speakers out there. Gonna, and some lot, lots of great um, vendors out there. Um, last time I was there, I, I met a lot, of, a lot of great people. And they're just so fun to hang around with and talk and share experiences with. And especially the vendors, man. Uh, so if you like knickknacks and, and uh, um, souvenirs and stuff, this is the place to be. Vulture City Mines, Paracon Part 2. Come on out and join us. It's going to be a great show. Okay, this is my other channel. Haunted Encounter Adventures. So I'm a, not only am I uh, a, um, uh, a UFO hunter, but I'm also uh, I'm also started to do within the last year or so uh, ghost investigations, and uh, I have my own uh, YouTube channel, and uh, it's called Haunted Encounter Adventures. Please subscribe to that. Uh, let's try to get this channel off the ground. And uh, I, I've been doing a lot of great paranormal stuff. If you guys like ghosts and, and things like that, then that's the channel that you want to check out and subscribe to. And I just completed I just completed a porthole box to talk to ghosts, to talk to spirits. And uh, I want to share this with you real quick and uh, on what it does because I'm really excited. I mean, it took me a while to build this box. And uh, I'm going to show you in this video on how you too can, can build this box. And uh, so let's take a real quick look at this. Welcome to another episode of Haunted Encounter Adventures. Join us as we learn how to make a spirit portal box. We're going to take this ordinary Bluetooth speaker and turn it into a portal to talk to the spirits. Here's a sample. Do you like this box that I made? So cool, thank you. Can you see me? Hello? Let you out? Where are you? Are you in the box? Thanks for joining us tonight. We are going to explain on how you can turn an ordinary Bluetooth speaker into your own portal box or wonder box to communicate with the spirits. Let's get started. Decide on what Bluetooth speaker you would like to work with, then get yourself a noise gate guitar pedal. This will filter out the white noise on some devices. Use Velcro to attach your devices to your speaker. Use a 9-volt battery to power your guitar pedal. Make sure you use the correct cord. Also, pick up a case to hold the battery in place. Before you Velcro the 9-volt battery holder to your speaker, make sure you modify the holder first. First, remove the wires then remove the components on top, then remove the bottom. Then Velcro the battery holder to your speaker and then place the battery inside connected to the wires and use a bag tie to tie the battery in place. You can experiment with other guitar pedals for different types of effects, but make sure you always use the noise gate as your main pedal. On the back of my speaker, I use a boost pedal to boost the sound and it's connected to the 9 volt just as earlier I had explained. You want to make sure that you use a guitar pedal that has echo, delay, and reverb. I use the quick draw guitar pedal. Attach all these guitar pedals to your Bluetooth speaker with Velcro along with your batteries accessories. As a bonus, you can attach LED sound activated lights to give your porthole box some character.
I glued the LED lights to the front of the speaker box, then velcroed the battery pack on the back of my porthole speaker. Don't forget to add crystals and copper wire to your porthole communication device. This will create a type of energy and will attract the spirits to this porthole. Connect the copper wire to the base of the guitar cords. Now you want to use the aux cord and audio adapter, then connect the two together. Then use this cord to plug into your favorite spirit communication device. Then plug it into your noise gate guitar pedal on your porthole speaker box. Use another aux cable with plug-in adapter and plug it in to your speaker. Now you're ready to use your porthole wonder box. Can you see me? I see you. What's your name? Alice. Alice? Is your name Alice? Yes. How old are you? You already told me? Do you like this box that I made? Do you like this box that I made? Yeah. So cool, thank you. Yeah. I made it just for you. Yeah. So it works pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you. What would you like to say? Let me out. Yeah. Let you out? Where are you? Yeah. Are you in the box? Yeah. Are you in the box? Yes. Can you see me? <laughs> Can you move something? You gonna show me? What are you gonna show me? Later that night, while my wife and I were sleeping, in the bathroom, the garbage can lid flew off the top and landed across the floor. And it was scary as it woke us up. Thank you for talking with me. Will it be okay if we talk again later? Is it okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. We hope this helps you construct your own portable wonder box or spirit box. Please subscribe to our channel. We will be using this same box in our next Haunted Encounter Adventures episodes. And thank you again for watching. Boy, wasn't that crazy? <laughs> that was something. And I think uh I think Allison uh 
uh, didn't want to uh, didn't want to leave. <laughs> didn't want me to say goodbye. So let's make sure everything's good here. So yeah, haunted encounter adventures. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, haunted encounter adventures. Also, uh, the Phoenix Lights, petroglyphs in the sky, and uh, so let's let me make sure that everything is good here uh, on the control panel in the studio, so we don't have any interruptions. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that talking with Allison, man. That was a trip. You know, I had no idea that we were going to get uh, such a response. I was just testing out the box and uh, making a, a video. And, and lo and behold, um, a 10-year-old girl named Allison uh, started talking with me. And uh, it was weird, too, because when, when she said that, because uh, uh, I asked her if you can move something. And she says, yeah, I'm going to move, you know, while you got, while you're asleep. And it's going to be scary. And uh, sure enough, man, you know, while we were sleeping, uh, we have a, a garbage lid on our bathroom uh, trash can. And it lifted off the, the trash can and flew across the floor and landed over there by the doorway. And it woke up. Uh, it woke us up. And yeah, it was scary. And, and Pam didn't want didn't want to <laughs> oh, didn't want to move. She wanted me to go check it out. And that's when I realized what had happened was the lid actually lifted up and was thrown across the bathroom floor. This isn't the first time uh, a poltergeist activity has happened uh, here in our apartment. And uh, I, I believe this poltergeist that we have here, it comes and goes. But uh, there has been interesting things. Just the other day, uh, uh, my dog's uh, ball, my, my dog's squeaky ball, it squeaked on its own. It was weird. It squeaked on its own, and our dog went over there to check it out. And I was like, "Dude, did you hear that? Also, you know." So yeah, yeah. We have um, I have like a little uh, museum up here in my in my apartment, and it's full of paranormal stuff. Some is haunted, some isn't, and it's like a little museum. And uh, so yeah, it could be it could be any any number of things. But uh, yeah, go ahead and check out my uh, my uh, YouTube channel, Haunted Encounter Adventures. And uh, please subscribe and, and share. There's a lot of neat stuff, neat videos on there, and uh, a lot of great editing work that I've done. And uh, so, yeah, just do me a favor, help me out, and uh, check out the page, and uh, please subscribe. Okay, what else we got going on? Okay, here's my book, The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, Landscape for the Spirits, and I've already talked about this. You know, I don't get any pros, I, didn't, I don't get any profits from this. Um, you know, I told the publishers to uh, give the money to the foster kids, and and if they're not, then they're then they're taking the money. So I don't know what's up with that, but I don't make any money. I haven't received a dime out of the two years this thing has been been available to the, for the public. Um, I haven't seen not one dime from this. So the book's doing pretty good, from what I understand. So go out there and pick up your pick up your copy today. Now this isn't just a normal everyday UFO book. Uh, this book um, explains on the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona, and it explains on how to understand the petroglyphs in Phoenix and uh, the Native Americans. And, and basically, uh, it's a history um, of what's been covered up. So, and it explains, if you, under, if you read it correctly, if you understand it, excuse me, it tells you what the Phoenix Lights is. Now, earlier I mentioned that, uh, you know, I found the uh, 1997... Uh, Phoenix Lights event uh, carved on South Mountain and look at that I mean this is a prehistoric UFO sighting of the exact same thing uh, that happened at least a thousand years ago um, that everyone witnessed supposedly witnessed uh, March 13th 1997 the exact same formation and what does the archaeologist say about that petroglyph he says it's the cycle of the moon <laughs> well I'm sorry Mr. Uh, archaeologist that's a little bit too many moons that you know, that's carved right there okay uh that's this one too many uh type of moons <laughs> not the moons but but phoenix lights uh in the sky 
recorded over a thousand years ago. Check these guys out. Jerry and, and uh, Brett from Four Wheel Watchers Radio Show Worldwide Live. Contact these guys. These guys are great, man. They'll hook you up. And if you guys have any paranormal uh, stuff that you want to talk about or or videos or anything, UFO sightings, anything that you guys want to talk about, contact these guys. Be on their show. <clears throat> They're great hosts. And uh, tell them Jeff Woolwine sent you. And make sure you subscribe to their channel, Four Real Watchers Radio Show. Boy, that's a tongue twister. All right, let's get into the program. Okay, so in my last few shows, I was talking about uh, some of these... Uh, um, we know that's a little ahead of myself here. Uh, we're talking about um, uh, these uh, these uh, lizard men. Let me find the right petroglyph here. Okay, yeah. So in, in a lot of my shows, I talk about these lizard men that are carved out there on the mountains of Phoenix, Arizona. Now, let's concentrate in that in that belly right there. See the belly? You see that dot in the belly, like the stomach? You see that dot right there, right there in the middle of your screen? Let's concentrate on that right there, that dot. So in watching these things, this is an orb, okay? This is a UFO orb that everybody sees in the skies today. This is a light. This is a Phoenix light. This is an orb. And this is what everyone is seeing in the skies today now now watching this thing I've seen this firsthand all right these orbs these things like to shape shift and change into like animals and and people and things like that okay so what this orb is doing he is morphing he is changing shape okay and so basically what we're looking at here I mean look at the look at the bottom here let's go up you see that fork you see that fork right there See how it's making a fork, and then and then they say that this is a, a tail, and we'll get into that on what that is here in a minute. But look at that, okay? See that fork? Now look up here. We have a we have another fork and another dot, another orb. See that? So the head of this so-called lizard man is actually another orb. So we have two orbs in the sky connected with a line coming down, connecting. So we have two orbs, and now it's morphing into what some would like to say arms. Okay? And, but then again, if you look at it, you know, up, up top, look at that fork. So that, that fork, I'm going to explain on, on what, what that fork really is. In studying the rock art and studying these UFOs, watching these things on what they do, we are actually looking at many different UFOs here all in one. And they are all connected, connected together. These things like to shape shift. They like to join together. Okay. This line right here in the middle, that neck, the body, that line, they, they actually, uh, in my opinion, I, I don't know this for sure, but I believe that they use each other's energy. This line comes out from the bottom of them. No, it's not a string. It's not a balloon. A lot of, that's what a lot, of, a lot of these people misunderstand is when they see these things in the sky, they see these orbs, and then this line is coming down from it, and they automatically assume that it's a balloon and that's a string. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that it's not a string. It is a line, and they use this line uh, to pick and to pick people up, and people and animals up. This is what the petroglyphs show. This line and or tail is, in, in my opinion, very dangerous. Okay, because this is what was used to take the whole calm people away. This is what the petroglyphs depict. This tail is very deadly. <laughs> it is very scary. This is why there will never be disclosure. They will never tell you uh, what's really here. Uh, because this type of inf information, uh, for one, the public won't be able to, to accept. And for another, if, if they do understand what's really here, it's going to scare the shit out of them. 
and they are not going to want to live in the valley anymore and uh, the economy uh, for Phoenix, Arizona will go down the tube. So they will never, never, ever tell you uh, what the petroglyphs mean, uh, what the Phoenix lights really are, what these creatures in the sky are because of their history. And like I said before, their history tells, says that these beings took these people away. And the reason why, you know, is because, you know, the sacrifice didn't stop. Everything went dry and desolate. And so and that's the story on that. So it seems like every time, because the Hopis say that we're in like these mini worlds. Okay, right now we're in the yellow w world. And every time the world changes, every time we get into a new world, uh, these beings are here to help mankind out. Because mankind needs these beings to survive. So this next world that we're about to have, um, the world is going to change, whether it's going to be through a pole shift, whether it's going to be a third world war, but something is going to happen in our future very soon. And this is why these creatures have been, re been more and more gathering in our skies. This is why these beings are, are being seen so much uh, lately in our generation. Uh, because they know that that is time that that very soon um, mankind will need these beings once again to survive, just as it was in the time of the beginning. Every time the world changed, these beings are here to help and mislead mislead mankind. And this is the reason why they will never tell you, you know, what's really going on here is because they don't want they don't want to scare you. But that in a nutshell, if when you look at is, uh, Earth's history, when you when you study the past, you can really you can start to understand what the future holds for us. And this is the reason why these beings are in our skies today is because they are getting ready uh, to enter the next world. They are getting ready for mankind to need them once again. For instance, the next world, there won't be any food, there won't be any water, uh, the, and the air is going to be polluted. Uh, Two-thirds of mankind will, will be missing or destroyed. Um, but yet they see these lights in the sky, and they come down and they shape-shift, right? They morph, right? Because that's what they do. That's what the Indians say. That's what, they, that's what we've seen in the skies. That's what the petroglyphs depict. They come down, they morph into a human. Okay? And he says... This is what I can do for you. I can clear up the water. I can clean up the air. I can give you food. I am the one that you've been waiting for for 2,000 years. Worship me. Then it's going to start all over again. Just as it was with the whole Indians. They didn't know better. They thought these beings were gods. They were doing miraculous things, not only in the sky. I mean, the Hopis say they learned how to weave their baskets from watching Spider-Woman uh, weave her web in the sky. Well, look at this right here. This is, this is the tail. This is the line. This is what they learned from, this line here. Okay, and look how big this creature is. Look at the man. We know that that's a man uh, because he doesn't have a tail. Look at the guy on the bottom there. See, and look how big this is. So are we talking about giants? Are we talking about Nephilim here? Very possible. Very, very, very possible. It's interesting because we can read some of these old scrolls and then we can go out on the mountains and see the prehistoric photographs of what the scrolls are talking about. That is a match. Okay, that's credibility there. We can read about these things and, and these old scrolls and testaments and things like that. And then we can come out here on certain mountains around the world and can see the photographs and the exact same story on what these scrolls have been telling us all these all these times. I think it's a second. I think we, we need to take a second look at these petroglyphs because this past is going to be our future. This is why these creatures are here. That's why they're never going to tell you what's really here. And I believe the next cover-up story, because we had flares, we had balloons, we have trash, we have paper, this and that. And I think the next cover-up story is going to be crafts, uh, spaceships. Okay, so people can understand that. People can relate to spaceships and crafts and things like that. All right, so if you come out and say, look, these Phoenix lights, these lights we see, these orbs that we see, these weird shape shifting things we see in the sky was actually the cause of mankind's downfall in the past. This is what the evidence says. 
This is what we can verify, that they had a lot to do with mankind's disappearance. Then a lot of us are going to say, well, if that's if they were here, they took people away, and now we're seeing them. What's that, what's that saying about our future, right? So that is where the conspiracy lies at. That's where the conspiracy is all about. That's why they will never tell you about these things. They might say that they are, but they're going to mislead, mislead you on other stuff. But the real truth, the real history of the world is that these things are alive. These things are here. These things is another part of like an animal. And they led mankind down a false road and it led mankind down to their disappearance. Every tribe, like I said before, every tribe around the world disappeared at the same time. They all worshiped these beings as gods. And, in, and what had happened? These gods, these lights, these orbs took people away, never to return. That is what the history shows. So when we look at this petroglyph here, and I'm really concentrating, I'm really concentrating on the fork. Okay, these forks here. Okay. Because those forks are all over a South Mountain, right? And it's 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 uh, depicting picking people up by their heads and carrying them off into the sky. Here's one. Here's one here. I want you to concentrate on the two forks. Some would say that's a lizard man, but actually those are two UFO UFOs that are that have merged together. That look some may understand think that, that that that's a person but actually look at the top see that's a fork look at the bottom that that's a fork okay see that there that is a fork look at this here that is a fork also okay so it's two forks that emerge together all right so that's two ufos two entities two uaps <laughs> unidentified phenomenon but I think we're, we've, I mean, if you guys follow my shows, we've already identified these beings. We know what these beings are. And, you know, I'm always talking about their history. And uh, this is where the, uh, the credible evidence lies at. This is why they won't tell you about this stuff. This is why, you know, these cable shows and stuff, they're not going to go that way, that far. Okay, because this is taboo stuff. This is forbidden knowledge, forbidden history. All right, this has been covered up for many, many years. All right, but this is where the evidence lies at. This is the truth. Okay, here's that fork. Here's what I'm telling you about. Now, this right here, I, I found this high up on a mountain. So it's really weird, too, because like, it was like this huge valley where I discovered this petroglyph at. Um, there's this huge valley. Okay, I'm going to describe this. It's a huge kind of valley, canyon on South Mountain. And then right in the middle of it, is what I like to call like a stage, okay? It's this high boulder, this huge stone mountain boulder sitting in between these two valleys, all right? And it kind of resembles, it looks like a stage. That's why I call it a stage. And so I climbed up on the top. It took me a little while to get up there. And this is what I found, okay? I found two spirals and, and a fork in the middle and two uh, lights on the right, all right? And those forks, like I said before, are very, very scary. Because these are, the, these are the beings that so many times on South Mountain I have found on where they use that line. That line comes down and, and either is picking up a coyote or picking up a person. And on the bottom left, we have a spiral, okay? And we know it's a spiral because it's it's together. Like the ones on the right, those are not together. Those are not spirals on the right. On the left, on the bottom left, is a spiral. Now it's going counterclockwise, right? So that is a doorway out. And it's pointing down, okay? It's pointing down on where this so-called so -called stage is, all right? So this huge boulder rock is the emergence point on where these beans are coming out of. All right, it's coming out of here, and this is where this fork is coming out of. And, and to the upper right, uh, right there, there's some very faint petroglyphs there. And you can actually see, uh, see how this line is actually 
uh, connected uh, to that spiral there. So this bee, this UFO, is coming out. And look, actually, look closer. Let's examine this a little bit closer. Look at this. Okay, so the line is coming out of the spiral. It's going up. And look at that. It is merging with the fork. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. So this line, this being is coming out of the doorway. He's going up out of the doorway. And now he is connecting or, you know, he's making this fork. So maybe the artist is telling us, look, this fork came out of the doorway. He kind of looked like an orb because that looks like a circle there, like an orb. Right. And then out comes the line. There's the line. And then all of a sudden, bam, this huge fork appears. Right. Look at that. Look at that fork. Look at the line that's connected. It goes all the way down into that spiral. It's coming out of the doorway, coming out of the spiral, out of the emergence point, out from the underworld, out from the fault line in the mountain. Now, these other beings over here to the right, you look at that line there. See, it's kind of connected there. Looks like sunglasses, looks like glasses, doesn't it? Now, we know that it's not spirals because they're not connected together. You see that? They're not connected together. So that is a type of, you know, when, when I've seen these Phoenix Lights firsthand up close, they kind of pulsate. They look like energy, right? They're pulsing with plasma, right? They're absorbing that energy, okay? So, and they're pulsating, right? And I think that's what this is representing here is two Phoenix Lights in the sky and they're pulsating, okay? They're Because they have these rings, you can see the ring, one ring, two ring, three ring, one ring, two ring, three ring, one ring, two ring, three ring. They're pulsating, right? And I think that's that's how this artist is trying to portray these lights in the sky, that it's pulsating. So we really need to we really need to learn and distinguish the two because these are not spirals the ones on the right they are not connected together so they're not emergence points they're not doorways but the bottom left is and out from that doorway comes this very scary very scary fork so many times i've seen that fork up there on south mountain where it's literally picking people up man and one of the ways to understand if like a, if a human is alive their arms are up okay much like what that last petroglyph that i was showing you um the, you see his hands are up in the appeasement pose that's that's a symbol for life now when this fork is picking people up their arms are down okay that is a symbol for death all right that person is dead because his arms are down but if his arms are up that person is alive so many of these tombs that I found on South Mountain also depict the exact same thing. Their arms are down. That is a symbol for death. Now this one here, look at this. I, I talked about this in, in, in later shows. But here we have a spiral. Okay. And that's going clockwise. So that's a doorway in. All right. Clockwise, right? No? Out? Counterclockwise. <laughs> so it's the doorway out. And the reason why they, they call these things spirits is because I've seen this. When they come out of the mountain, they're like ghosts. Right? And then when they when they, they leave the mountain, when they get higher of the mountain, they become more solid. And I believe this is what the artist is trying to tell us. Okay, first this uh, this lizard came out of this doorway, out of the emergence point. Now you can barely see. See the way the artist made this ghost of a lizard? You see that? So when he came out of the doorway, he's a ghost. He's a spirit. Now when he gets further away from the doorway, he becomes more solid. Okay, and then there's a man right there looking up at what's going on here. Okay? And and that's that's exactly what these beings do when they... I've seen this. When they come down out of the sky, they're solid. 
They're shape shifting. They're morphing. They're changing colors. Uh, things like that. And uh, when I get closer to that mountain, all of a sudden they're like a spirit. You can see through them. You can see through. They're a ghost. You can see through them. And then they go hover over the mountain. And then they just absorb themselves into the rock. I know it's crazy, but I witnessed it. I've seen it. It's recorded in history on what these beings do. They absorb themselves into the rock. Same way when they come out of the rock, when they come out of the mountain. They're a ghost. They're a spirit. They emerge out of the doorway, out of the ground, out of the boulder, out of the mountain. Can see through them. And then when they get higher, they become more solid. They start shape-shifting. And it's a spectacular sight. That is what we're dealing with here, ladies and gentlemen. That is what mostly we are dealing with here. Is flying saucers and technology real? I'm open for that. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm waiting to see some evidence of that. The evidence right now that we can prove is what we see on our own eyes. And a lot of people think that those lights are spaceships or crafts. And, you know, they just don't get it yet. They, just, they, haven't, understand this. they haven't understood this yet. That that light is the being, is the, is the creature itself. There's nobody inside that. This is not mechanical device that we're looking at here. That light, that orb, that flying serpent is the creature, is the, is the living being. And especially when they're lighting up right over fault lines, they're absorbing that energy, dude. That's why they're, they're lighting up. That's why there's, they're, they're absorbing energy. So I'm open. I'm open to see, you know, some evidence of spaceships, some evidence of abductions and things like this. But for so for for now, I mean, I mean, everything, dude, it's just OK, cool. It's a neat story. But we really because there's so many hoaxers out there. There's so many people preying on other people's ignorance for fame and fortune, fortune and glory, Dr. Jones. I mean, that's basically what it is. You know, all these books about UFOs, all these books about this and that, but there's no proof, man. Here, the evidence is the proof here. The petroglyphs, these ancient scrolls that we read for so many years, that's been there for three to three, from 3,000 to 6,000 or 7,000 years old. These scrolls have been sitting there telling us about Earth's history, telling us what these things are in the sky, and these petroglyphs out there on the rocks Showing us photographs, man. Showing us pictures on what to look for. And I've been all over those mountains in Phoenix. And I have not once seen any evidence of spaceships or crafts or anything like that. I see shape-shifting entities. I witness shape-shifting entities. I've witnessed these things coming and going out of the rocks. I've witnessed the rock arts. I've experienced it. I, I understand the petroglyphs now. I understand Earth's history now and what's really here with us because I did my own investigations. I did my own studies. I didn't rely on somebody else telling me what's here. I investigated this stuff for myself. I crossed my T's, I dotted my I's, and I made sure that if I'm going to come out and talk about this, I have the shit to back it up, and I do. And a lot of these other sky watchers and a lot of these UFO uh, people out there don't have a leg to stand on. Sure, they can walk the walk, but can they talk? To, but can they talk the talk? Is that backwards? They can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. I can talk the talk and walk the walk. I got the evidence here. And this is what I'm doing. I'm presenting my facts to you: what the Phoenix Lights is, what these UFOs in the sky really is, what their history is. And I didn't know any of this. I had to find this out all on my own. You know, I was being told the Phoenix Lights, a spaceship over the valley, blah, blah, blah. I went with that. I believed that. I went down that road thinking that. I started my history, my hunt, my investigations on that type of information, the spaceship. But all the evidence was taking me down another road. And there wasn't any credible evidence of that. 
of spaceships and technology and little gray men living in people's closets. The evidence was taking me down another road. And that's when I totally did a 180. I'm, you know, first I'm thinking, oh my God, they're here to help us. And now I'm thinking, oh my God, it's scary shit. <laughs> no wonder the government isn't going to tell us about this because they know. They know who's here. The higher ups do. You know, these jet pilots and these people in the army and, and, and Navy and stuff like that, they see them. They don't know what they are. The, the, the captains and all this stuff, they don't know what it is. Even the president probably doesn't even know what it is. It's the higher up people. We all know this. We all know this. It's not the presidents. It's the higher up people. It's the higher up. It's the people in the black helicopters, the people in the in the airplanes, the people who are monitoring these sky creatures, who know these sky creatures are here, who's covering up the evidence of the gold tombs on South Mountain and, and covering up the altars. And, and they even made South Mountain a government park. Why would you do that? Why South Mountain? Why would you make South Mountain a government park? There's nothing special about that mountain unless you understand the history of this mountain and unless you understand the gold that's buried there and all the artifacts that can be found that, that rewrites history of what we think that it is today. If you understand that, sure, let's make it a government park because you go in there and start digging up tombs, then you're going to get arrested. That's the whole reason why they made South Mountain a government park is because they know the tombs are there. They know the mines were there. They know there's stuff buried on South Mountain. They understand how special, how sacred this mountain is. They've been watching these lights hover over these mountains and these flying snakes and crosses and diamonds and orbs all, on, all around this mountain for years, a lot longer than I've been around watching these things. They know. They understand. They're waiting. And that's the reason why they're monitoring. They're waiting until these things start taking people up into the sky. That's the real reason. They're not there to investigate them. They're not there to, you know, see, you know, how they are or, or try to interact. No, they're afraid of these things. They know the history of these things. So they are watching, especially when I was up on the mountain. So many black helicopters were circling me and watching me when I'm up there investigating. Why? Because they're, they're waiting to see if I'm going to get taken away by these things. And when it does, and if I did, they were going to inform the president and everybody was going to panic and go into their underground because they knew the shit was going to hit the fan and all these people in Phoenix were going to get, was going to get taken away by the lights, by the creatures, by the, by the sky spirits. That's exactly why they're watching what's going on. They're not here to make friends with them. They're not here to you know, see what they're doing. They're waiting, they're monitoring this type of activity because they know eventually the shit's going to hit the fan and these lines are going to come down out of these orbs and they're going to start picking people up. That's what the real uh, information is on these black helicopters and what's going on. That's personal experience, man. You know, that's all this information that I discovered doing my investigation, my 15 to, to 20 years investigation on these, um, not only the black helicopters, the petroglyphs, the Phoenix lights, the UFOs, the tombs, Charles Holbrook's writing in the, in, in the Phoenix, Arizona's uh, library, government department, uh, all, those, all the altars, um, everything, everything, everything. Uh, it's all building up here. That is the evidence, not spaceships and, and, and a craft going over Phoenix. I can't, there's no evidence of that. The evidence is right here. The petroglyphs, the history, the gold tombs on the mountains, the sacrificing, the shape-shifting entities going in and out of these fault lines, going in and out of, in, into the underworld, coming out of vortex doors in the sky. That is where the credibility lies at. And look, all down, all down central area. So there's, a, so uh, right in the middle of Phoenix is a road called, called Central. All right, you follow Central South, it will take you all the way to South Mountain. Now, downtown Phoenix, they have these petroglyphs as art all along the streetlights of Central going towards uh, South Mountain. And look what they're showing here. Okay, look at this. All right, look at this art. This is on a lamppost. Right, so we have a bent UFO right there. Look at that. Then we have a spiral. Look at the spiral right under him. See the doorway? Then we have a barbell 
right there in the middle of your screen. And then look at these circles. Those are the orbs that we're seeing, everybody. We're seeing that today. Look at the orbs there, the circles. See that? And the lima bean to the bottom right there. Look at that. And then another crooked snake. Look at that. Look at these symbols here. These are UFOs, man. These are the living entities. These are the creatures that we see in the sky today. The evidence has been sitting right there in front of our face the whole time. <laughs> we just have to use our third eye. Our third eye and look through the lines and understand. This is what they're talking about. I think I'm going to leave this up right here for a minute. Not yet. We're not going to talk about you yet. Here we go. Here's the barbells there. See? <laughs> Look at that, man. The evidence has been sitting right there in front of our face the whole time. And now all we need to do is examine the evidence. Stop listening to hearsay. Stop listening to people trying to make money off, you know, uh, other people's ignorance. Okay, let's examine the fact here. Let's examine what we have uh, as far as the evidence, okay? And the evidence is suggesting that, yes, we do have something here. There has been things visiting us. That's that's you know that's that's common knowledge. We already know that because we already see them in the sky. But then we have a lot of people trying to tell us, you know, this and that, and inexperienced people trying to say, yeah, there's spaceships, and yeah, I got an alien baby in my closet, and yeah, my grandfather took care of one, and and yeah, oh, well, I was a you know, dude. Okay, that's all fine and good. That's neat. And I'm not, you know, bringing them down or anything like this. I'm just saying that, you know, that's a neat story. That's cool. But I think we need to, you know, let's look at the evidence here. Okay, that's that's neat. You saw a spaceship. Spaceship took you away. You live to tell about it. That's great, dude. It's awesome, man, you know. But it's your story it's a great movie <laughs> but we have to look at the evidence we have to look at the facts we have to look on what we can prove not hearsay hearsay needs to take a holiday man we just can't we can't be so gullible and and ignore the history here ignore what the indians been telling us here the whole time what the what the prehistoric photographs are showing they're showing us what's to come what's here what has always been here we can't ignore this we can't put this on the back porch and we can't and, and these old scrolls we can't you know man is making religion out of that right take the take religion out of these scrolls and look at it for what they are written about. Look at it for face value. Take the religion out and, and read it. And it tells you what these beings in the sky are. Where they came from. Who they are. What they are. What they do. How they got here on earth. It tells you. We can read these scrolls. And then we can go up on the mountains and see the photographs. This is on the Holberg Trail in South Mountain. Now, look at that. See, a lot of people would think that's a whale if they didn't understand. Now, now look. Well, I didn't. Sh in this photograph, um, you can barely see the sky in your upper right corner. You can barely see the sky there. Now, normally, I take photographs uh, looking in the sky uh, because that's what the artist uh, wants you to do. So, this is carved high up on the rock on Holberg Trail on South Mountain. Okay, so we have to look up to see that. That's how, one of the reasons how to understand these glyphs. When they're carved high up in the sky, that's because this type of sighting, this, 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 this event took place in the sky. So we have a doorway right there. We have a spiral doorway. And we have this type of whale 
coming out of it. And then we have like a lizard guy there, you know, or two forks, like we were talking about earlier. Right? And then we have another spiral looking thing. Oh, it's not a spiral. Is it a spiral? Let's zoom in on this. Let's let's examine that there on the on your right of your screen. Yeah, that well, that's kind of hard to tell. Like that could be a, a spiral, yeah, because it does kind of look like it's it's merged together. Okay, and then we have some coyotes there and a zigzag pattern there. Look at that, right? So that crack right there, that crack right there, I bet is the doorway to the underworld. Is the emergence point, right? And then. You know, for so many years, people are looking up there and saying, oh, why is there a whale <laughs> carved way high up there? You know, because the Indian, the Indian carved it high up on the, on the cliff like that I, because he saw it in the sky. So he wants you to look up because he's telling you, you have to, you have to look at the whole landscape here. When you examine the petroglyphs, you have to look at the whole landscape because the artist is including the landscape in with the art. So when you see a glyph carved high up, he wants you to look up in the sky because that's what took place. That is what he's telling you. This took place in the sky. This is what's going on up there, and this is what he carved. He saw what looked like a whale UFO, whatever. Look at that. See that? Now, I filmed this in 2007. You see that there? It's the exact same thing as what's carved on the mountains of Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, actually, I've only seen this once. And that was, that's, that was carved on South Mountain. This is a still shot of the video. You see that there? The exact same thing that the Indians carved over a thousand years ago. This is why it's called petroglyphs in the sky. Is it called is it called spaceships in the sky? No. Is it called alien creatures in the sky or alien, you know, mechanical devices in the sky? No. It's petroglyphs in the sky. Petroglyphs in the sky. Cuz that's what we're seeing in the skies. Our What's carved on the rocks are petroglyphs. One of my uh, one of my shows, I'll 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 show you the video of this sighting. It's pretty incredible. Okay, let's talk about this one UFO sighting that uh, I find I found very very interesting. This is pretty. Pretty neat stuff. Let's start it off. This is like, this is real neat. This is uh, pretty spectacular. Here we go. We're going to show it just here in a minute. Here it comes. Let's look at this here. I'm going to try to slow it down and, and pause it. Here it comes at you. Look at this. Look at that creature there. Look at that. Now watch how it shape shifts and stuff. See how it's going in a straight line. You understand that? Look how it's going in a straight line. This is how we know that it's not a bag, that it's not a balloon, because it's moving in a straight line. It's on a mission. It's going somewhere. Look at that. See that? Look at this. Look at this creature. Look how it's it just shape shifted there. See, it's it's changing shape. Look at that. Let's pause it. Look at that thing. Is that amazing? This is this is a very great close-up shot. Whoever took this did a great job of this. Look at that. Now, do you see? Did you see how it just shape shifted there? Look at that. See? This is how we know this is this is legit. This is this is true. This is not computer generated. Okay, this I mean this person, look at that. Look how it's moving. You see that? Look at that. This is incredible footage. This is what's here, people. This is what we need to start looking at is these type of life forms in the sky. And a lot of people see these things and it's blown up. Oh, it's got to be a bag. Oh, it's a balloon. Okay. And they just, they're looking for spaceships. They're looking for crafts. Okay. And they totally dismiss. Look at that. See, 
Look how that arm just kind of morphed out of there. Look, now look at it. See? Look at this. Look at this. Incredible. Very good. Very good. This is what's here, people. This is what we need to be examining. This is what we need to start paying attention to are these type of sightings, not hoaxes of crafts and things like that, but things that are shapeshift in the sky that are moving in a straight line, moving across the sky, that are changing shape, that just doesn't look normal, okay? A lot of people say, oh, it's a spaceship, Jeff. No, this is not a spaceship. This is not a craft. I'm going to show you the whole sighting now without, without stopping it. Let's examine this again. This is real time. I'm not going to stop it. Look at this. Look what's going on here. Look how it's moving in a straight line. Okay? Look at this. Look how it's moving. Look how it's changing shape. It's morphing. This thing is alive, okay? This is what is here. This is what can be verified. Look at that. Is that amazing or what? That is just spectacular. I love this video. This is beautiful. I mean, it's scary, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, just look what it's doing. It's like supernatural, you know? It's like... It's alive. It's on a mission. It's it knows who's watching and who's not, and and is coming right over to this person who's filming it. It's like sometimes they want to be seen, okay. And this is how we know. Look at that. See that? And look, you see the wind blowing. Look at the trees. You can see the trees blowing in the wind. See that? Look at that. Look how that thing. Look how that. I'm gonna move that back one once again. Look at that 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 leaf right there. Look at it swaying back and forth. Look how the wind is blowing. Uh, but this thing is just moving in a straight line. It's going against the wind, okay? It is going in a straight line. Is that amazing or what? That is incredible. This is real. This is true. This is just absolutely spectacular absolutely amazing this is great work great footage and this is the time the, the kind of stuff that we need to be looking out for so I'm gonna end it there thank you guys so much for watching glad you guys could tune in and and uh you know and we'll we will see you next time um on the petroglyphs in the sky ufo show make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel the phoenix lights petroglyphs in the sky send me your ufo videos and if i like it i'll air it on the on the show give you full credit for it and uh, send me your petroglyphs uh, make sure that you contact me um, at the uh, Paracon in October. It's going to be great. We're going to be talking about UFOs. And then make sure you get your copy of my book. I'll be signing autographs and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, send me your UFO videos. I'd love to take a look at them. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe the Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky. And please don't forget about my paranormal page, uh, Haunted Encounter Adventures. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.